Did you know every year around 2,000 species of animals go extinct? Now, you may think that when these animals go extinct, you'll never see them again, and they're gone for good. But thanks to modern science and technology, that's not exactly true. You see, biologists have developed a science known as de-extinction. This basically uses the DNA we have of extinct animals to bring them back to life. Now, whether you think bringing extinct animals back to life is a good thing or not is a different question. But it's pretty amazing that we can do this with today's technology. So let's take a look at some extinct animals that one day, pretty soon, may be roaming the world with us. Number 10. Woolly Mammoth Despite the fact that no humans today have seen woolly mammoths, we all know what they look like. They're basically gigantic furry elephants with tusks. While there have been unconfirmed sightings of woolly mammoths in Siberia, science says they're extinct. Woolly mammoths have been extinct for a long time. But, surprisingly, not as long as we thought. For many years, it was believed that they went extinct during the Ice Age. But it turns out that was only on mainland. It turns out that just 4,000 years ago, 1,000 woolly mammoths lived on Wrangell Island. This is a fairly small island in the Arctic Ocean. And scientists are using remains of woolly mammoths found on Wrangell Island to bring them back to life. Because woolly mammoths lived in cold climates, lots of their remains are intact. In fact, in 1997, a nine-year-old boy found a frozen woolly mammoth in Siberia. Now, of course, the woolly mammoth was not alive. But just like how some humans freeze themselves to preserve their body, that's exactly what's happened to the woolly mammoth. Scientists got a lot of very valuable information from this find. They were able to extract the woolly mammoth's DNA. And using things like stem cell technologies, they may be able to bring woolly mammoths to life. Back to life pretty soon. Bert, would you guys really want these gigantic scary creatures roaming around? Humans did used to hunt woolly mammoths and eat them. Bert, woolly mammoths would not be hunted without a fight. And many humans did actually perish trying to hunt woolly mammoths. But how scientists actually use woolly mammoth DNA to bring them back? Well, they would likely use woolly mammoth DNA from frozen specimens. They would then merge this DNA with similar animals such as elephants. This would create a hybrid woolly mammoth elephant animal. Using selective breeding, they would then be able to breed woolly mammoths out of extinction. That is the most common way de-extinction works. But how long will this actually take? According to Harvard researcher George Church, we could see woolly mammoths alive in a few years. It's pretty awesome that while humans do make some animals go extinct with hunting and climate change, we can bring some back. But do you think this is ethical, or is it plain God? Siberian Unicorn When I say the word unicorn, you likely think of a fantastical animal from a movie. But unicorns don't just exist in fairy tales, they used to actually be on this planet. However, they did not look like a majestic horse with a cone sticking out of its head. Instead, Siberian unicorns looked pretty scary. Siberian unicorns had one gigantic horn on their head. They also had a large hump on their back, similar to a camel. They were gigantic and could crush pretty much any human. That's why humans always hunted them in big groups. They were alive thousands of years ago in the grasslands of Eurasia. Siberian unicorns went extinct around 200 years ago. But newly found bones suggest that some may have survived up until 40,000 years ago. Siberian unicorns weighed around 4 tons. The problem researchers had when bringing this animal back to life is that the DNA they had was too old. But in 2018, new technology finally allowed for Siberian unicorn DNA to be analyzed for the first time. But why exactly did Siberian unicorns go extinct? Although they did live at the same time as early humans, it was not our fault. It turns out Siberian unicorns were very picky eaters. They used to eat very tough, dry grasses. But over time the climate changed and things got very cold. All of this grass was buried in a big blanket of snow. Other grass eaters adapted their diets to other vegetation that survived the snow. But Siberian unicorns did not, and they paid the price by going extinct. Well, it's likely they will merge Siberian unicorn DNA with rhino DNA. That's because rhinos are the most similar animals to them that we still have today. Thylacine The thylacine is also known as the Tasmanian tiger. It would actually be much easier than other animals to bring back the thylacine. That's because they went extinct fairly recently. And we also have the remains of the last thylacine on Earth. Thysines are similar to wolves. They're known for their black stripes on their back and their long, stiff tail. They inhabited Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea. In the 1900s, there were still many of these in Tasmania. But that's when this animal was demonized and accused of eating sheep. Farmers and the government did not like this one bit. 
and they gave bounties out to anyone who would shoot thylacine. The last thylacine passed away in 1939. It was actually taken to an Australian zoo to be looked after. But that is the opposite of what happened. It was neglected in the zoo. The thylacine was locked out of its sheltered area where it slept. It was exposed to boiling heat in the day and freezing cold temperatures at night. Sadly, this caused the last remaining thylacine in the world to pass away. We have the complete thylacine genome today. The genome is basically the entire genetic instructions of an animal. This DNA could be mixed with wolves and breed thylacines back into existence. So while humans did make this animal go extinct, we can right our wrongs. Just imagine how cool it would be to have a pet thylacine. Dodo. Dodo birds went extinct fairly recently. The birds lived on the island of Mauritius. They were famous for being rather dumb and also not being able to fly. An organization named Revive and Restore is working on bringing dodos back. The only problem is, dodo DNA is very hard to find. But this all changed in 2016, thanks to Beth Shapiro. She is a researcher at the University of California. She was able to sequence the genome of the dodo bird. This was by sequencing the genome of the Nicomar pigeon. This is the dodo's closest living relative. Saber-toothed tiger. Everyone knows the saber-toothed tiger from the Ice Age movies. They were like tigers we have today but with two gigantic fangs. They also lived in snowy environments. During the Pleistocene era, these were found in North and South America, but they went extinct around 10,000 years ago. This was because of climates changing. Also, lots of their prey went extinct, and humans also hunted saber-toothed tigers for their meat. But thanks to saber-toothed tiger remains, frozen in ice, we can bring them back. Despite the name, they are not actually related to tigers. It's believed there are many undiscovered saber-toothed tiger remains frozen in Siberia today. If we can find these, then they'll be brought back even quicker. But some say there aren't any benefits to bringing this animal back. After all, they are gigantic in size, and if they were out in the wild, saber-toothed tigers would be very dangerous to humans. Giant Elk The giant elk, also known as the Irish elk, went extinct around 13,000 years ago. They were mainly found in Eurasia and Northern Africa, but many of their remains have also been found in Ireland. The most similar living relative of this animal are reindeer. Using giant elk DNA and a deer embryo, they could bring back the giant elk. Like the dodo, the moa is another extinct flightless bird. These were very gigantic, weighing 510 pounds. They went extinct fairly recently, in the 1600s. They used to inhabit New Zealand, but they went extinct thanks to humans hunting them for their meat. But researchers at Harvard University have been able to reassemble the moa's genome, and in 2018, DNA was extracted from a toe bone of a moa. So soon we may see these gigantic birds roaming around with us. Their closest living relatives are emus and kiwis, is. These birds are still alive today, so we may be able to bring the moa back quite quickly. They would take DNA from a museum specimen of a moa, and then put that into the egg of a living kiwi or emu. While humans definitely have done some damage and have made some animals go extinct, it seems that with science, we can right our wrongs and bring some back. Although there is lots of debate in the scientific community about whether this is a good idea or not. Some say this is amazing that we can bring back extinct animals, but others say that while it is cool, it is also plain good. Some say nature simply has to take its course, and some animals simply just have to die out. But leave a comment below telling me what you guys think. Do you think that we should bring these animals back to life or not? Comment down below. If you guys want some more amazing videos, then check out my second channel. But as always, thank you guys for watching.